Uh, hi, this is uh, Robert Jacobson. I'm here talking to uh, Dr. Armin Ellis. And uh, just have a few questions this evening for Armin. Um, Armin, with the uh, recent announcement that uh, NASA is going to be doing some changes, what would you advise a potential uh, current space industry employee who might feel that they're going to get laid off? What would you suggest to somebody who still feels that their skills are relevant and current and they, they still want to stay in the game even if they're going to be laid off? What might you recommend to someone? Um, First, let me start off by saying that I'm not representing any specific company or organization um, in this interview. And uh, these thoughts and opinions are uh, my own. Um, I think that's a really tough question because obviously the people who are experiencing redundancy right now uh, are looking at a bad economy as well as an industry lost. Uh, but perhaps it's not a bad time to be involved in entrepreneurship. Maybe right now they can take their skills and uh, leverage all the incentives that governments, um, that local governments have, and uh, try to put together a successful business plan. Uh, one good thing about this environment is that um, the great talent is easy to come by in many respects. So. Uh, I suppose uh, that is one alternative to uh, staying in, this, in the space business uh, after redundancy from some of these major projects. Armin, wh what, what have you seen that's missing from a lot of uh, um, space-enabled space business plans and other businesses? If you're an entrepreneur looking to start a, a business within the space sector, whether it's small sets, uh, uh, or other applications. What would you uh, What would you suggest to entrepreneurs who are getting in the industry in terms of like uh, some real high level to do things to maybe avoid? I think with entrepreneurship in general, um, I would say make sure that you're in what you're doing, and uh, make sure that you enjoy the people that you work with. Uh, you know, one advantage of working in a, a small company, and probably one that you start off, is that uh, you have the ability to select those individuals that you consider as competent. Whereas, if you were working at a, a very large organization, perhaps um, uh, one of the, I mean, it doesn't even have to be an aerospace company, but uh, some of these uh, organizations that uh, have employed tens of thousands of uh, individuals, you often get an assignment of people rather than uh, a selection uh, of your own choosing. So um, my advice would be to really uh, ensure that you enjoy the, uh, the work that you're doing and uh, the people with whom you're working. Uh, do you want to go to space? And if so, why? Uh, in principle, yes, um, and it would have to obviously depend on, you know, what the circumstances are, uh, but um, the why is, I suppose, um, it's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> is there something uh, that maybe one thing that most people don't share one thing that most people don't know about you that is utterly fascinating about me about you uh, or not so fascinating <laughs> could be mundane <laughs> um, gosh something more personal nothing to do with it can be totally unspace related <laughs> you know honestly I it, nothing springs to mind um, you know, I'm pretty approachable, so ask whatever question you like and you'll probably get a straight answer. Oh, I know one. I'm writing a book in philosophy. Ah, <laughs> and uh, is, uh, do, you expect it, do you expect it to be finished uh, in 2010 or is this a more longer term oh, project? No, no. It, it, I will at least spend uh, uh, five years uh, more on this book um, because I'd like to give it uh, plenty of time to mature. 
Uh, I feel that um, uh, some of the ideas and concepts in this book really require a lot of uh, reflection um, before it could be unleashed. Well, we'll look for it. Well, thank you. That was uh, Dr. Armin Ellis expressing his personal and independent views, and hopefully we'll hear back from him again soon. <laughs>